Okay, let's talk motorcycle games and why I don't believe they exist. Coming up. Okay, that's all we ever hear with law enforcement is clubs are gangs and the general public believes this nonsense the bad apple defense don't work according to some people even though we prove time and time again that it actually does work especially when it comes to law enforcement but i wanted to take you on a walk to tell you what a real gang is. Operation Triple Beam. It has been an extensive deal all across the country and so far has netted 300 people and 92 real gang bangers. Let's take a listen real quick that way you can understand a little bit more about it. In the heat of the summer, 14 state, local, and federal agencies have been putting the heat on criminals over the past 60 days, part of Operation Triple Beam Tidewater. 46 persons wanted for allegedly committing felony offenses, including eight suspects wanted for homicide and 17 suspects wanted for shootings and firearms offenses. In the months of June and July, the U.S. Marshals led a counter gang initiative across Hampton Roads. Gang related violence often involves gun related violence, which inflicts a massive and tragic toll on our communities. The operation also seized 36 guns, $500,000 worth of drugs and nearly $40,000 in cash. The Norfolk Police Department uh, had a big footprint in terms of those arrested. Since May 31st, two dozen teenagers have been shot or killed in the Hampton Roads area, and officials here say many of the firearm seizures or arrests are related to those crimes. Here in Norfolk, there were 14 individuals arrested, nine of which were gang members. Many were juveniles, says Boone. One of those arrested is connected in the shooting of four kids ages 6 to 16. That happened on Madison Avenue in Norfolk on July the 2nd. Most of these people, there, um, they've been arrested before. Some of them, that are, they're already out on probation when they get arrested. After a surge in summer gun violence, the streets a bit safer today. But Norfolk Police Chief Larry Boone says this is just the beginning and community-based solutions are in the works. We didn't get you this time. I want to underscore, we'll get you next time. Constitutional. We really need to focus on our youth, the flow of guns, and poverty. In Norfolk. There you go right there. That was the start of the operation. And it's a sad state of affairs that it's mostly teenagers and stuff. But that was just Norfolk. The operation went all over the country. And I got an update right here from the New York Post. 300 so far have been arrested. 92 alleged gang members, and this was updated on the 12th, and it said more than $4 million has been seized at the end of the six-month operation, and this one is in Texas as well, you know, Texas, where law enforcement does nothing but title clubs gangs there. It's ridiculous. So it produced 351 arrests, 92 alleged gang members, confiscation of 86 guns, 4,360,968 dollars, and 32 kilos of illicit drugs. This according to the U.S. Marshal Service. And the probe was headed up by the Gulf Coast Violent Offender Task List in cooperation with several federal and state agencies. And the investigation zeroed in on street and prison gangs. Street and prison gangs. 
Not one motorcycle club was involved in that operation. Now, according to law enforcement, if you are to believe that clubs are these big national gangs, they provide all this dope. They sell all these guns. They're just the biggest, meanest freaking gangs out there. You'd think maybe one or two would have got caught up in this. No. These are true gangs. All this talk about how clubs are gangs, how they work with cartels, how they push these big criminal enterprises is nothing but a joke. A joke that the police use media to propagate their crap. Not one was in this operation. And again, if they were the big bag motorcycle gang, you'd think they'd be caught up into something like this. But no, who was caught up? Prison gangs, street gangs, and a bunch of kids, man. It kind of says, you know, where are we going as a country if we have kids that are into this kind of stuff hardcore? Where the hell's the parents anyway? I don't know, man. It is what it is. Chicago. Very sad state of affairs here in Chicago. It is a war zone. It is Chirac out here. That's why we call it that. Every day you hear something, but they don't want to cover that. And what else they don't want to cover is that all these big one percenter clubs out of Chicago that they're calling gangs, nobody's involved in anything like that. Nothing. So when you hear motorcycle gangs, make sure that you understand that's just something law enforcement uses to pad their budgets. Let's take a look at uh, how bad it really is here in Chicago. Really bad here in Chicago. Let's take a look real quick. Let me mute this mic so that way I don't screw you. Violent weekend in Chicago. A woman was fatally shot while driving in the North Austin neighborhood. If you want to get a sense of how persistent gun violence is in Chicago, look no further than this new measure to stop the bleeding. It's just another layer of security and protection. This month, Chicago began installing bleeding control kits around the city, equipped to treat gunshot wounds before paramedics arrive. Each of the kits contain enough supplies to treat up to eight victims. The city started installing 426 of them in hundreds of city-owned buildings, including libraries and city hall. NBC Chicago reporting the city's Office of Emergency Management and Communication says parks and metro stops will likely be next. So it's basically to uh, stop the bleed. A flyer for the city's program notes the kits can help treat, quote, falls, penetrating injuries, gunshot wounds, and more. The move, just the latest sign of how local governments are reacting to a nationwide rise in shootings last year. The FBI revealed this week that murders jumped 29% in 2020 compared to the year before, the biggest yearly increase since the agency began tracking the data six decades ago. Overall, the rate of murders is still lower than in the 1990s. Back in Chicago... We have a common enemy. It's the guns and the gangs. The, the city has seen actually you know the common enemy would be you you troll but anyway uh that's how bad it's gotten in chicago because of true gangs it was always funny if you ever talk to a neighborhood especially in chicago where a motorcycle club clubhouse was the people would always talk so positive about a club. So positive. Why? 
because the neighborhood was protected. They believe in them, and the clubs made the neighborhood safer. And this is especially true, because one thing that clubs really do, they put clubhouses in the crappiest parts of the city, and the reason be it's cheaper. But another reason is they believe in the community. So you have these neighbors and people that live around the clubhouse saying, well, this is the safest block around. It sure ain't because the cops are there. I just wanted to get this operation out there so people can understand, especially independent bikers. Because I know a lot of independent bikers are now starting to believe in all this gang crap that the cops push. Oh, they're a motorcycle gang. I know a lot of independents that are believing that. And it's time that you push back on something like that. These are true gangs. These are the ones that are ruining communities. There is no clubs that our cartel organizations are working with them. They're not organized. I always say, and you've heard it before, clubs cannot even get a damn run off without being an hour, two hours late, okay? They're, they're disorganized. So to go around and say they're these multi-million dollar freaking criminal enterprises is just ridiculous. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Pass the video around, especially to an independent. Let them see what a real gang is, what real operations are, and... You got to question the motives of, say, down in Texas, how they're always banging on the clubs, profiling the clubs, the whole nine yards. Don't forget to install us on Roku, Insane Throttle TV. We're on Amazon Fire TV as well. Don't forget to uh, help us reach 10,000 people over on Instagram. But with that, I'm out of there. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.